Now, thanks for staying with us. <laughs> We're discussing patriarchy today. And um, Raiden, in 1996, had written about patriarchy. And he said, patriarchy encourages male leadership, male domination, and male power. It is a system in which women are subject to economic dependence, violence, domestication, and the peripheral of decision making. It imposes the structures that categorizes some type of work as men's work and some as women's work. One of the core attributes of patriarchy is that traditional male qualities are central to other qualities. Now, patriarchy influences different areas of society, including culture, family, school, the workplace, and relationships. Its presence can translate to inequality and gender-based violence. Now, joining us for this special roundtable conversation are some of our co-anchors on ways. We have Chinasa Ken Ugu, Uti Elu, and Akanemio Ojo. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 Thank you, ladies, for joining us this evening. Hello, hello. You're all looking amazing. I know, right? I miss them in the Thank you. We've missed you ladies on the show. All right, so quickly, um, when this topic came to the table for a conversation, it was yeah. coming... Following yesterday's topic. Yes, following yesterday's conversation about violence against women and Olamide's um, ordeal, the young mm -hmm. lady that was murdered by her husband, you know. And, you know, when we were having the conversation in our group, we were talking about the, um, that, that it can also be traced or linked to the ideology of patriarchy, Superiority. right? Superiority, yes. Yes, you know, and that ideology mm -hmm. of patriarchy is the ideology of dominance, mm -hmm. where, you know, where you think that you, the, where is a system of government where a man holds power, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the woman is largely excluded from it. You know, so what, what do you think, Sanzi, before I come to the ladies? I absolutely believe that that is what we see, um, especially today, like in all sectors, work, offices, government, even in the home, although in the, in the home is like a different conversation, um, um, especially. But then even when um, the woman is being ra like raising a girl child, there, we see all these things playing out, which is what eventually affects the adult woman that we see playing a part in the society and i'm glad that we're taking it from different angles today so we Absolutely. have um almost every angle um covered because patriarchy women are getting upset and mm -hmm. i always say when people are angry hear them if you don't hear them out it turns to resentment and then it grows to hate and we we've had enough hate in the society that last us a lifetime right absolutely so let me come to um to ak if you can hear me ak i'd like you to establish your thoughts when it when the the topic of patriarchy came into play as we got olamide death what came to your mind well thank you uh a lot of things came to my mind, but most especially what I centered on was how we are raising girls or how uh, women are raised in this country. And one of the things that I'd like to say is that obviously everybody knows we're raised differently. Now, the woman is taught how to endure. Now, when growing up, they tell a lady that when you marry, you have to endure a lot of things from your husband. If you get pregnant, you have to marry your husband. So if you have a child with someone, it's an unspoken rule, but you should stay with the someone until it's clear that the someone does not want you. You're not supposed to speak when men are speaking mm. in the traditional sense. So when men are discussing and probably having a, a family meeting, for instance, the ladies are set aside. So the lady is the one that is supposed to have long suffering, but the half patients is supposed to know that men are not faithful. It's supposed to be quiet when men are talking. And you have that ingrained in your brain, okay? And you are supposed to endure in a presence where, in a situation where things are not going well, when clearly a situation is bad. But you can't give up. Why? Because you have been taught that for you to be a woman, a good woman, it's dependent on your ability to endure those tough times, to endure those tough people, and you're supposed to stay in it till, till the end. So that 
had has sat with us for a very long time. And that's how most women think. So you see people thinking it's okay for a man to cheat. You know that men will always be there. And I, and I think that a lot of us also are familiar with, you know, phrases, with sentences like a man will always be a man. That a woman has to be the one to hold the family together. When you hear that uh, marriage is broken, for example, the first person people look at is the woman. Yeah, she true. was not able to keep her home. Absolutely. And so when you, you see how, again, this thought process, this psychology has made people stay in places where they cannot stay, hmm. have made women not even progress at the workplace because a man is supposed to do what a man is supposed to do and a woman is supposed to do what she's supposed to do. Okay, so let me the come to... Let me come to Uti. Uti, um, if we are looking at it even from the biological standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mm -hmm. had a puppy. I had two puppies, a male and a female. In all honesty, the male puppy was so strong, you know? It's tinier than the female puppy, but it would grab all the food. When the female puppy tries to come close, it growls at her and all of that. That animalistic instinct, even in the animal kingdom, the male... Ex exhibits dominance. that dominance you understand so if we even don't understand it from the biological point of view wouldn't we say that it, it is only natural for for a man to behave in a certain way like feel like he's above the woman uti so i mean this really comes down to um the nature and, and nurture element of the conversation now when we look at how um biology, like you said, in terms of boys, uh, when you look at how when babies are born and they measure the amount of testosterone that is within the baby's umbilical cord, you can almost predict how um, aggressive and rambunctious that child will be. So you see some boys are very calm and you see that when some boys are growing up, they're a lot more boisterous, they're all over the place. It's down to their testosterone levels. Now that's nature. But then the nurture side of it comes in. So what are parents doing to ensure that these boys, no matter what their levels of testosterone are, no matter what it is that they are actually carrying within themselves, how are they being nurtured to be good men? Um, there's so many gaps in there. And I mean, AK touched on something. We raise women to endure. We raise women to be stronger. But when we're raising the male child, he essentially has arrived as king of the castle, the a uh, person who or the child who will ensure that the family name goes on. Mm. So very little is expected of the male child. At least um, that is what we're seeing as the foundation of these problems that are manifesting today. The fact that the, the female child has been trained from the time she was very young to endure, to be strong mentally, and to be able to process her emotions, which is not done necessarily with the male child, is why we're seeing so many of these issues now where men are lashing out. Typically, all the burden is put on the woman. So the man can't process his emotions, he can't deal with his anger, he can't deal with his rage. But guess what, when we go back to nurture, as you said, I go back to nature, as you said, the male dog is stronger than the female dog. The man has all the power, the man is more physically um, uh, inclined. So then you see the male, the man, being able to use that physicality against the woman because he can't process his emotions. Mm. It's, it's literally back to nature versus nurture. All right, so Nasa, I would like you to come in here before we come mm -hmm. to Sanzi. Um, Nasa, if you can hear me, what 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 yes, is your thought I on can. the subject of patriarchy and how it affects the, our society? Okay, so uh, thanks, Owa. And I'd like to, I think I'd like to bring what um, Akanimo and Uti have said together. And before I answer your question, so what I say, and a, re a quote I recently um, uh, came up with was teach the girls not to endure pain because it's not a show of strength or humility and then teach the boys to earn and not to own because again that's not a show of strength and it only breeds entitlement and for me what I find in society is the way people are raised obviously comes across in the way they start to relate with other parties so if I raise my son to feel like you know what you're a boy and to define your masculinity, it's about you taking control and being in charge and not being vulnerable. Then I'm going to, that um, in my interaction with people beyond my relationships with the, with the opposite sex, I'm just going to always want to take ownership, right? So I begin to have a sense of entitlement. And so when I'm, 
I, I want to get something and it's not going the way I want it to go because, you know, I'm a boy, I'm a man, I'm supposed to be in control and it's mm. not going the way I want it to be. And I'm not also supposed to show my emotions, right? So guess what? I become aggressive. And that, I think, is what we're beginning to see across board where you're seeing a lot of gender-based violence in relationships because a man in his nature, so Uti spoke to nature and nurture. I think it's a bit of both in truth. I think a lot more nurture, I mean, nurture now because of the way they're being raised. I feel like I have to react a certain way because I'm not supposed to be vulnerable. So yeah. I want to own this thing and I'm just going to take it by force. And then the rape issues that we're seeing, oh, for me, it all boils down to patriarchal norms and how ch children are being raised. All right, so Sanzi. Right, so I'm definitely looking at it from um, um, the aspect of um, women in government. Uh, in government, I think uh, uh, generally, globally, we have about 28.1% of women in government. And these are not like strong roles. We have even a lesser percentage of people like, you know, prime ministers, New Zealand and Germany, Angela and all that. So I'm going to be looking at it from the perspective that there are certain misconceptions that people have about women in power, one of it being that even women also think so, which is the painful thing that when women get into power, that they're only going to be concerned about female affairs. And I completely disagree. I have seen women who handle the office of CEO and they carry everybody. As a matter of fact, it has been... Um, I was reading a research that says because of a woman that when it comes to emotional intelligence, that women are actually more superior. So you talk about also one of the things that people say that disqualifies a woman to be in leadership position or governance is based on that um, psychologically they're not qualified. And I'm wondering what exactly is the qualification? Because when it comes to leadership, nobody is sending you to war. Even when it comes to war, women already go to war. Mm. So if you're going to be a president, you're not going to war. What do you need? You need your mind. If you're going to lead, um, head an organization, you need your mind. If you're going to occupy any top leadership position, it is about your mind. And that female, that, that mind is what, according to the research I read, that women are more emotionally able. So it's not about salon gossip. We we do a lot of salon gossip, yes, but it's because of, like Uti said, or was it AK, the background of where, I think it was Uti, where we grew, or how we were raised. No, that's the AK. Yeah. yeah, right. So how we were raised, like you shouldn't think about politics, you shouldn't think about this. Your job just is just a caregiver to nurture. And get married and exactly. raise your children. But you look at all these women doing, the Queen of England, she's been there, the longest living ruling monarch as mm. well. And she's been doing a great job. Obviously, you're going to have challenges as a leader, yes. But it doesn't take away the fact that you are a woman in authority and you are able to handle and take decisions. Like, women can take risky decisions. Absolutely. They are not indecisive. And there is this concept of when you keep telling a person that you can't do something, eventually they just accept that mindset and say, you know what, I can't, I really can't do yeah. this. You know, but... Yeah. Okay. I, I think we have a comment, uh, um, but the person didn't put their name, so I don't know who this person is. But the person says, firstly, if the ladies can hear me, mm -hmm. I love your topic tonight, but it projects an imbalanced perspective because no man is invited to add milk male folks perspective especially in the Nigerian society. It is important to also note that some other societies are matriarchal. We we need to have a balanced perspective of our society evolve with role assigned based on mutually beneficial and complementary purposes. I like um, whoever you are, I like your, your, your standpoint, but the truth is the conversation for tonight was not to discuss, oh, we want to hear what a man has to say or we want to hear what a woman was, has to say. Mm -hmm. We are trying to bring out the effects. So this is what patriarchy has done to us. This is what mm -hmm. patriarchy has made us, you know, even for all the people that are doing, because if you notice globally right now, yeah. there is a, there's a huge fund allocated to anything women and girl child. That is true. So that's why you see a lot of people setting up NGOs and insisting that, oh, the NGO is focusing on the girl child. And I also say every now and then that that mm -hmm. is a big imbalance. Do you understand? It has to, we have to find a middle ground. We have to be, it has to be both ways. But if um, whoever wants to step in here, um, maybe uh, um, AK, if you want to come in here, what do you think? Because every time we, when the conversation comes like this, people keep saying, no, let us hear from the man's perspective and all of that. I, I don't think, you know, we really must do that. Who are? Yeah. Can I, can I say something, Ua? Um, 
So I was going to, it, it brings me to um, what we have in the US now where we're saying all lives matter and black lives matter. So this is the kind of conversation we're having now. Yeah. And I would, I really don't um, know the person that sent it because they didn't put their name to tell me one matriarchal country in the world. They're all patriarchal. Okay. Men are on top of every, even the countries where you have women as prime minister or president. Absolutely. So men rule. And you have said it. Um, there's a portion of every political office, maybe the Senate, maybe uh, an organization, and they'll say 30% is allocated to women. Why? You know, why give an allocation to, to say 30% for us to be fair? We're giving 30% to women. So I think that your it is the people that suffer from it that can tell you how it feels. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. I what agree with you. I agree with you, AK. I think definitely. I was just thinking the uh, Black Lives versus All Lives Matter as you said it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's spot on. The truth is, you can argue that there are two sides to every story. But right now, the story is about the female gender. Everything that is happening right now highlights the disadvantages of the female gender. And it's a man's world. I hate to admit it being a woman, but it's still a man's world even though the female child usually is more brilliant than the male child. The female child matures faster than the male child. There's so many statistics I can give you around male children and female children, but in the way we have been raised, even in my own personal experience, I, I remember being woken up first thing in the morning, come and go and sleep, come and go and learn how to cook because you're going to know how to do all these things. And I used to argue and say, but I will pay somebody to do it. And the response was always, Oh, but you need to know how to do it first. But guess what? The boys were only required to carry on the family name. That stopped at washing the cup. So when today that is true. you see how men behave, men who you can't understand why they have such an entitled nature, but they've been entitled from birth. Because when you wake up and you see your sister has been awake two hours before you, has swept, cooked, washed, and cleaned. Done everything. Done everything. And then your food is served. If you're even in a, okay, you know, your mom was one of those people, maybe you take your plate to the kitchen, but I can bet you, you won't wash it. Your sister will be there waiting for all the plates to make the round and then she will wash it. So that, I mean, to bring in a male perspective into this conversation right now, um, I personally don't think it serves any purpose. We've, heard, we've, we've lived the male part of the conversation for my entire life. So I think right now we need to address how it affects the female gender. Okay, so let me come to NASA. There are some questions, I'll be mean, comments here on WhatsApp. Angela says, men, yes, have advantages. So does a woman. Uh, we have to understand that. I don't think we are, in, we, we are arguing that, um, that point. Then Rose says, I don't really know what family would give a child, a male child, a more privileged childhood, at least for mine. We never had any difference. And I am 36 years old. You know, that's from um, from wow. Rose. <laughs> okay, so can Nessa, you want to say I something? Her, I can give him or her that's, so that's many very examples. interesting. <laughs> that, that's just, her family is an anomaly. That's, yeah. not, that's not the norm. And to answer that question, I said, oh, well, to, to, to contribute to that comment the, the um, person made, I think that for me, the way, the way I look at it is, it's not so much about gender roles. It's just, for me, it's about who has the strength or the capability to do this, right? And um, a lot of times, and I think I was going to say that in as much as we're talking about this now, we all contribute to this as well. We, there are times, I'm sure one of us has said, well, that's his role as a man. He's supposed to do this. Somewhere in our subconscious, again, is because of the way we've been raised. That is it's true. just you know, because of the things that are now going on, that we're beginning to have these conversations and also realizing that we've contributed to it and maybe then we need to have a change in our mindset and start to think differently and even in the way we raise our children. So Uti is raising a little a boy. boy now and I'm sure that <laughs> she's going to raise him way differently from... It's going to do, it's going to do both girl her. and boy role. But you know the funny thing uh, about this stuff? Honestly, mm -hmm. when I first got married... Right. I tell you, I kid you not. I wash my car myself. I, I, if the light bulb is out, I fix it. If what? anything is out, I do it. You know, it got to the point my husband was thinking that it's like you don't need me in your life. So it became a, a big issue because I wasn't raised to be in an environment where there was a role for a boy or to a role for a girl. We did everything. 
You know, like, and I agree with Rose. I, 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 I am standing on the same pedestal. We did everything, you know, so it became an issue. I had to slow down because it's like, ah, if you're not hanging your hand, you're not behaving like a lady. So I start to, I had to tell myself several times that, oh, you know what? Leave certain things for, for Oga to do. You know, I had to get to that point. Well, you may need to speak yeah. up. We can't hear you clearly. Oh, okay. You know what? We'll go on a break because <laughs> we have to go and pay our bills. We'll come back with the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.